Insulin, the molecule you see here shown at the left, is used to regulate or control the amount of glucose in our body. It's one of the many, many functions that proteins undertake, chemical messengers, sometimes called hormones. It is believed that many of these proteins act the way they do because of how they're arranged, how they're put together, not just necessarily the sequence of amino acids, but how they're arranged in three dimensions. This program is going to take a look at that. We call it the structure or levels of organization of a protein. Let's begin with what we call primary structure. Primary structure simply refers to the sequence of amino acids that we have in a particular polypeptide or protein chain. Again, there are some 20 amino acids from which to choose to put that together. The next level of organization involves some bonding that can take place within the chain. In particular, the hydrogen bonding that can take place. That hydrogen bonding arises from the presence of the amine and carboxyl groups that are present in the amino acid. And that leads to hydrogen bonding that can take place. Now, that hydrogen bonding can result in two particular formations or shapes. Here I've shown an example of a protein over here on the right. You'll notice coils and flat sheets. First of all, the coiling-like structure re results from hydrogen bonding that takes place between amino acids on the same polypeptide chain that are approximately four units apart. You can also get hydrogen bonding taking place between adjacent chains of the polypeptide, and that leads to the sheet-like structures that we see below. We can get further bonding taking place in our polypeptide chain beyond just the hydrogen bonding that takes place due to the backbone. We can get <clears throat> what we call tertiary structure. That tertiary structure can result from four further interactions. One could be hydrogen bonding that takes place between the R groups that are attached to our amino acids. You can also get ionic bonds forming. These result from forms of the Zwitter ion that can take place. You can also get London dispersion forces happening between nonpolar sections of our chain. These are sometimes called hydrophobic interactions. And we can actually get covalent bonds happening between cysteine amino acids. They form what's called a disulfide bridge, a covalent bond that exists between the sulfurs when you remove the hydrogens in the cysteine amino acid. So these provide four further bonding types that can take place beyond the hydrogen bonding that can take place in the backbone. Our final level of organization, some proteins have and some don't. The hemoglobin molecule, which I've shown here on the left, is actually made of four separate polypeptides that intertwine to create the hemoglobin protein. So this has quaternary structure. These chains have further interactions and bonding. They could be of the four types that were mentioned earlier. Lactamase, which is produced by some bacteria to prevent their attack from penicillin, is made of but one chain and does not have quaternary structure. So if you have questions, don't hesitate to post them. And again, thanks for watching.